we're unmuted. All right, guys, um, injuries for practice today. Um, Alexander won't practice ankle. Um, Richie James won't practice ankle. Debo, hamstring, tart, groin. Um, we're going to give Verrett a vet day. Um, Jimmy Ward, quad, and Jeff Wilson, ankle. Uh, go ahead. Kyle, with Jordan Reed opening his window, is, is he maybe a little bit ahead of schedule? Is there any chance for him this weekend? What, what's, what's the plan? Um, I, I think all three of those guys um, have a chance this week. Um, but, um, you know, I, I don't, they're not going to be going today, so we'll see how much. I mean, I know Tevin will get a little bit today, but um, not, not very much. So uh, we'll see at the end of the week with them. I'm hoping more for the Green Bay game, but I'm still holding out hope for this week. Fred Warner's obviously gotten a lot of praise for, for the way he's playing. How would you describe just the value uh, that he gives your defense and, and how much he holds it together given all the injuries? Um, a ton. I mean, just from a mental standpoint, I mean, he's the quarterback out there. Um, the calls he makes, all the confusing things that people do offensively with the motions and change of strengths and how he gets us lined up. And um, when you play zone defense a lot, you better have some good guys inside who look at the quarterback. And uh, I think Fred is as good as anyone. Kyle, when uh, training camp began, Bob Lang uh, read us the riot act about being too detailed in our reports uh, from training camp. But I, I think we all wrote that Jermichael Hasty was looking good, and we, we wrote that consistently. Was there ever a point that you guys were concerned that uh, other teams were coming for Hasty to sign him off the, the practice squad? What was your, your worry level uh, as far as losing Hasty? No, there was no worry. that Bob just got on you for no reason. He just didn't like your article. Um, no, I'm just joking. We had, um, the best thing about camp this year was that people weren't going to do really good in preseason that had a hard time to make the team just because we had some depth there. Um, and guys aren't ready to all the time, and you like to keep them on practice squad until they're ready. Uh, the problem is other people steal them off your roster. Uh, we didn't think we'd have to worry about that this year since we didn't have games, but your articles were written so well we got nervous about it. So we sent Bob on you, um, hoping you would chill out a little bit. Um, but, no, people have tried to come for him too this year. Um, you know, that's why, um, you know, the guy's been committed to stay here. Um, you know, we've expressed our plans for him, and, you know, the guy had to make a tough decision a few weeks ago whether to stay here on practice squad for another week or go to another team, and he chose to stay here. He believed he'd eventually get his opportunity, and, we told him we didn't know when, but uh, it ended up happening that next week. So uh, he was ready, and I'm glad he's here for it. Hey, Kyle, I'm going to try to make this question brief. Um, but you obviously generally have preferred kind of a classic drop uh, quarterbacks, and you've stated your reasons why that is. Um, and, and there's – I don't know if it's an increasing number of guys that kind of in between a Tom Brady and a Lamar Jackson, um, you know, like a, a Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, they can extend plays, but still they're not classic running quarterbacks. They're looking downfield and still looking to pass. Obviously, Russell Wilson, as he's gotten up in years, is increasingly like that. Do you see that as any sort of you know change in the NFL? And, you know, does it make you at any times consider like, hey, maybe – Maybe I can incorporate something like that in my offense. Oh, definitely. I mean, I have incorporated it before, and um, it gives you a huge advantage when the quarterback's a threat to run. Um, if you have to pick one way or the other, I always feel, I mean, no matter who you are, especially when you get in those playoffs, you know, eventually a team's going to make you sit in that pocket and make you make some big throws to win a game. Um, so you have to have that ability. Um, but anyone who has both always has a chance to um, exceed everybody. I mean, Tom Brady's the best to ever play the game, and if – he could run and do all that other stuff and still be the same way he is. I mean, that would be impossible to stop. And so the, the more you can have both, I mean, the more things you can do as an offense and the less things a defense can do, um, just having to defend everything. Um, I think there are a lot more coming up, guys who have um, – seen guys run around and make plays and have stayed at the quarterback position their entire career starting at Pop Warner to high school to college. I think more offenses have incorporated a bunch of things that allow guys to develop as pocket passers even though they're unbelievable athletes and can make plays. Um, I think some of the challenges over the last, at least in my career, 
is you get some of these unbelievable athletes who've never had to sit in a pocket and um, really go through that because um, they could just win games and Pop Warner just running around. They can win it in high school, just run around. They can win Heisman's and do whatever, just run around in college. And then eventually you get in the NFL and there's times that you got to do that and it's really tough. Um, but I think there's more and more guys coming out who have been doing both forever. Um, and when you have that, then you got a chance to do both. And that's why you can see that the league's finding more and more of those guys. How tough was it to see Jeff Wilson get hurt after the type of game that he was having on Sunday? Uh, it was real tough. Um, just how emotional he was, how much I know um, it hurt him. Um, he was having such a good game, and um, every time he's got in there, he's played very well. And that was his best game yet, and just not being able to finish it hurt him a little bit. Um, all of us did, you know, just watching him. I remember watching Lakin's reaction when we scored and how excited he was. And you could just watch his body language like, oh, man, here we go again. Um, but I think guys just hurt for Jeff. Um, we got a number of guys that step it up and we believe in. Um, the good news on Jeff is that it wasn't a um, season-ending injury. Um, high ankle sprains are always a pain, but we know he'll be back eventually to help us. And he's just got to rehab over this next month or so. And uh, we plan on to get back here in the end and help us out. you being the quarterback and those kind of defensive install drills, I guess they are. Uh, when did that start? What was your thinking to do that? When, what did you get out of that? Um, I mean, it started out just when I first got here um, in training camp. Uh, you know, I've never paid attention to the defensive periods as an um, offensive coordinator. And just watching how their walkthroughs went, how they have, you know, like a, a linebacker coach or a, a quality control playing quarterback for them. Um and then I was always just watching it, and I got so frustrated with where they were going with the ball, um, telling them that's not where they're going to go, things like that, just because I look at it more from a quarterback perspective. And I then I realized I guess I could go in there and try it since I was the head coach. I was a little nervous at first because I'm not the best quarterback, but I tried to go in there and just practice going where I tell our quarterbacks to go with the ball, and I actually enjoy it a lot. It's like my break in the day. Um, I also like talking to the quarterbacks about stuff after it because I go through all the cards they're about to go through when they compete, um, mainly our scout team guys, but I get to go through the same looks um, that CJ and Nick go through. So it's fun to do it, and um, I try to give the defenses somewhat of a realistic look based off what I think the quarterbacks are trying to get the ball to. Yeah, and, and some defensive players, and even Lynch mentioned, you're a little competitive about it. Do you think there's a good – I mean, do you like being an offensive guy who can kind of get into the mix with, during a defensive practice and drill? Yeah, as long as they can't hit me. I, I really enjoy it. Yeah, Football is very fun um, when those guys can't hit you. So um, sitting in the pocket with no pass rush and watching guys have zip play zone when I don't have to worry about the D-line and I can try some no-look throws and things like that that you would never try with the D-line coming at you. But it gives me some false confidence, and it's always fun to mess with those guys. And Lynch did say he comes into your office sometimes and you're going over the video of your throws. Is that what you're doing? You're going over your throws? Um, I mean, only for teaching purposes, you know. But I, I, No, I do enjoy it. I mean, I love getting a chance to play sports. I just don't get to do it much anymore. And I'm definitely not very good at it anymore. So but playing quarterback, at least you get to stand in place and not show how slow you are and everything. So that is a little more fun for me. And I like riding our the scout team receivers too because I get all the equipment managers and um, some of the guys who don't get out there. And but they've quickly learned each each week that we take it a little more seriously than they thought at first. Kyle, it is such a huge pay increase going from practice squad to the active roster. So I, I don't think you can make any promises that in the future you're going to bring somebody up. But what do you try to do specifically with Jamichael to let him know that even though his, his wallet might be taking a hit on the short term, ultimately, long term, it's the best decision for him? Um, I mean, I just, I really tell people the truth. And, and it's, it's, a, it's, it's a lot easier when you believe in someone like um, we did, with, like we do with him. But I mean, guys are so excited to get a start in the NFL and make a little more money that week and stuff. But I just try to tell guys that. I mean, a week's paycheck, that might help your lifestyle for a little bit, but I mean, that's not, that's not money. That's not going to last you. I mean, if you want money in this league, you got to make it and you got to get to that second contract if you ever want to have some savings and stuff like that. So um, are you looking at just trying to have a better lifestyle? Or are you looking at trying to um, change your life and maybe change your family's life and your kids? And if, if you want to look at it that way, you got to be in the right situation, the one that you're going to, you think will be the best decision long-term, not short-term. And 
Um, when you have a certain skill set and you fit, we can sell to a person how we think they might be better for us and other teams. And, um, and they really listen and they're trying to make the right decision, not just off of the check that week. Uh, I think sometimes guys make the decisions that they do to stay. Hey Kyle, this is a follow up on the, on the dark place kind of line of questioning that we talked about, but from the coach's perspective, I've, there've been several kind of famous pictures of you in the zone before a game in the locker room. Uh, I know you're not actually physically playing in the game, but what is the, your mentality like as a coach? Do you have to enter a different headspace to, you know, be able to, to go about that chess match in the most effective way possible? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think everyone's different, but I, I definitely do. Um, I get into a very um, kind of sharp, aggressive, quick, I try to rev myself. I don't try to rev myself up. It happens naturally throughout the week and by kickoff, it's it's kind of ready to bite someone's head off and it's always kind of just attacking and going and that's why I'm making a lot of apologies to people sometimes on Sunday nights and Mondays. Um, that's why I like working with people who we all know each other. So lots of times people don't try to take it personally. I mean, we're just all trying to win. Um, but I say to people a lot, I'm not I'm not trying to be nice. I'm just trying to figure out the, the best answer as quick as I can with as few words as possible. And that's kind of the mentality you get into um, in a game with that clock going, calling plays and just attacking. And you, you don't really stop until it's over. And when it's over, the, you try to relax a little bit, go home, watch the film and soak it all in. All right, Kyle, what's, what's the best answer then to describe uh, Seattle's defensive problem this year? Um, I mean, they're giving up a lot of yards. I, I know their numbers are real bad, but um, the numbers don't tell the whole story. I mean, the way their offense is playing, their offense is playing as good as an offense I've seen, um, putting up the points they're putting up, putting up the yards. Um, whenever you do have an offense playing like that, usually the opposing offense is trying to play a lot of catch up and stuff, and they're doing a lot of aggressive things, and they've given up some explosives, which um, gets the yards going. But, you know, they're still third in the league in turnovers. Um, which means they cause a lot of problems. Um, they haven't had all their players out there, um, which I know that'll help when they get them back, and I'm fully expecting them to get those guys back this week. Um, but I see some good players. I know you, we know how good their coaches are. Um, I just think that's how it's gone a little bit with the balance of their games, but um, they're playing good enough to win, and that's, that's why they've only lost one, and I don't think the numbers tell the whole story. Kyle, there's been this whole notion with Russell Wilson not restricting him this season. Have you seen that from what you've watched of their offense? Do you see him getting out there more and throwing more? Uh, yes, um, definitely. It's, I mean, Russell's always been the man. Um, and he's, I mean, you can't take anything away from their philosophy and how they've done it. I mean, they usually they keep it close till the fourth and then Russell kind of takes over and that's if they're, why they're hard to beat. And it's still similar to that, but... Um, they haven't. They've been coming out right away and getting after people and throwing just a little bit more than usual. Um, they they still have a run that's the same. It's something that you got to respect um, that they can get after you with, like they have to teams over the years. But um, Russell in the fourth quarter um, over the years is looking like that throughout all four quarters, and not just by how he plays, but the style, kind of letting it go, and uh, the way they're calling plays. And you know they got receivers and tight ends playing at a very high level too um, with Russell, which so you can understand why they're doing it. Uh, quarterbacks have talked, or uh, I've heard you know, Steve Young maybe just talking about quarterbacks that they reach a point in their career where they're still their physical skills haven't diminished to the point, um, and, and, but they're mentally so sharp that they can toy with defenses, um, and a lot of guys just can't can't reach ever reach that point because you know they get too old or whatever the case is. Um, do you see maybe Russell nearing that point where he has that level of mastery? Yeah, de yeah, definitely. I mean, when you're an athlete like Russell is, but then you have the reps that he has over time. And I mean, going back to watching him at NC State, I mean, he's always been such a poised player that the game just seems slow motion for. Um, and when you're a player who seems like you can play in slow motion, you see so much stuff, you let the game come to you. And just how long he's been doing it. I mean, whether doing it in rhythm or doing it off schedule, he's seen so many different defenses. He's played with so many different players. And um, when you have the skill set he does, you have the mindset he does, and then you have the experience he does, um, that's usually what happens. And that's what you see with, I mean, Russell's not there yet in terms of age and stuff, but that's what you see with all the older guys of, you know, with Drew and Tom and Ben. And, I mean, they all are unbelievable talents still at their age, um, but it's their experience and stuff that makes them really hard to deal with. Last one. Hey, Kyle, 
uh, to, to a layman it, when watching your offense every week, it, it seems like there, there's a handful of things you do that are different. Uh, maybe you haven't done in, in recent weeks or, or even so far this season. When, when you're doing things like that, is that just something you install early in the week or, or does the genesis of, of some of those things happen in, in the off-season program and, and you're just able to call upon that to, um, when you install for, for the weekly game plan? No, that always happens on from Monday night to Tuesday night, um, at least first and second down. And then we try to do stuff for third down and short yards and goal line tonight. And then we'll do all our red zone stuff on Thursday. Um, but no, that, that's, that's what we work on when the players are away. I mean, there's a number of us in here who do it. Um, we're always trying to balance things off with the formations and all stuff that try to get, make things look new and uh, put the defense in binds. But it usually has to do with what we're going against, what you see on tape. Um, there's lots of ways to do stuff. I mean, there's tons of ways, and um, we we put pressure on each other really to try to come up with the best ways every week. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But um, we never just sit there and say, "Hey, this is it." It's, it's always someone in the room starting with me, but then going to everyone else. Like, yeah, that's good, but can we do it better? And that's kind of the, the staff that we got. We challenge each other that way. And um, when you do that, usually, hopefully, you can come up with some new stuff. But you got to be careful with that too. You don't just come up with new stuff to come up with it. I mean, that's when you can water your offense down and water your players down and not let them play good ball. All right. Thanks, folks. Thanks, guys.